السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بشر وأنذر لا خير إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما All praise is due to Allah We praise him We worship him We seek his assistance And we seek his tawfiq And we pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala To teach us that which is beneficial to us and to give us the tawfiq to apply it. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما Tonight is the night of the first of Raja of the year 1439 since Hijrat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which translates into March the 17th of the Gregorian calendar 2018 I pray to Allah azza wa jal to make this night a blessed night to make all the brothers and sisters who might be uh, with us in this masjid or who might be tuning in live well actually the live stream is not working but to make everybody blessed in themselves and in their families um, I do apologize for the delay, subhanAllah, for some reason we're, we had uh, some technical difficulties, we're so the streaming is not working today, uh, but hopefully we'll fix it, bi'adnallah uh, ta'ala. The second thing, real quick, is you notice that today is Rajab, first of Rajab. So, Ramadan is fast approaching. Fast approaching, believe it or not. It feels like the last Ramadan only ended yesterday, Right? We just we were just praying Ramad uh, Taraweeh last uh, feels like yesterday, and now the next Ramadan is upon us. This is how time flies. So Ibad Allah, uh, benefit from your, from your time. Uh, try your best to use your time beneficially, for the time goes like this very quickly. Try to benefit from your time uh, in that which is good for you in this life and in the hereafter. Um, that's one second thing is obviously now that we are in the summer time uh, the time is so much shorter between Maghrib and Isha so really there's no time for to take a break anymore so it, it's gonna be like uh, uh, very uh, uh, you know small things like uh, cookies that um, you know we will serve as we actually go through the halaqa so there will not be like a, a full break in the middle as we used to have during the winter time with that said, and without further ado, obviously we uh, don't have too much time until Isha. Um, as you've uh, heard me announcing, so we've been commenting on this text of Aqidah called al Aqidah al Tahawiya after its author, Al Imam Abu Ja'far al Tahawi al Hanafi. And we've been commenting on this text statement by statement. Where we left off the last time is we actually commented, pretty much finished commenting on the statement number 86. Uh, but quickly, because I do see a lot of new faces with us, alhamdulillah, um, I praise Allah Azza wa Jal, and I thank Him for uh, gathering us and giving us the tawfiq to gather once again around the circle of ilm, where we remember some of the knowledge about Allah Azza wa Jal, about His deen, in the hope that it will bring us closer to Him, it will actually make us appreciate more Allah Azza wa Jal and His deen, and make us inch closer and closer back to Allah Azza wa Jal. 
for Wallahi, this is the happiness. Being pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal, pleasing our Lord, and believing in Him the way He wants us to believe, actually brings happiness in this life and in the hereafter. Makes the person happy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the happy ones in this life and in the, and in the hereafter. Uh, Imam Abu Jafar in that statement, we've said that this statement actually started the topic of Al-Qadr, right? The divine decree of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And in this statement where he said, وَقَدْ عَلِمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِيمَا لَمْ يَزَلْ عَدَدَ مَنْ يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ وَعَدَدَ مَنْ يَدْخُلُ النَّارِ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدَةً فَلَا يُزَادُ فِي ذَلِكَ فَلَا يُزَادُ فِي ذَلِكَ الْعَدَدْ وَلَا يُنْقَصُ مِنْ And Allah the Most High has always known the number of those who will enter paradise and the number of those who will enter the fire all together so that the number will not be increased nor will it be decreased. We talked about this statement and we said this is, uh, in this statement, Imam Abu Ja'far is actually pointing out the most important uh, part of Al-Iman in Al-Qadr. For we said Al-Iman in Al-Qadr, which is the question, which is the answer to a question if somebody asks you, what do you mean? What or what does it mean to believe in Al-Qadr? If somebody comes to you and tell you, what do you mean that you believe in Al-Qadr? And we know that Al-Iman in Al-Qadr is one of the mandatory pillar of Iman. So it's not optional. It's something that we every believer, to be a Muslim to begin with, he or she must believe in Al-Qadr. Then what does it mean? We said it means that to believe in the, in the, over, in the I'm sorry, comprehensive knowledge, all-encompassing knowledge of Allah Azza wa Allah Azza wa knows everything. Second, it means to believe in that Allah Azza wa wrote everything that people will do until the hour and everything will happen in this universe. He wrote it in Allah al-Mahfud 50,000 years before he created the heavens and the, and the earth. We also said this belief, this belief in Al-Qadr also means to believe in the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Al-Mashi'ah, the universal and existential will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Whatever Allah Azza wa Jal wills happens and whatever he does not, does not happen. ما شاء الله كان وما لم يشاء لم يكن does not happen everything that happens in this universe from wealth and poverty from belief or disbelief from health and sickness from uh, uh, rizq or lack of rizq for thereof right from uh, uh, illnesses uh, from sicknesses uh, from uh, 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 disaster Everything that happens in this universe is by the, is by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Also to believe in Al-Qadr is to believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is the only creator. He creates everything. He creates everything, whatever he wishes to happen, when he wishes that thing to happen, or when he wills anything to happen, then he creates it. Whether being, uh, bringing a live uh, uh, create creature into existence or whether be it a non-living creature into existence whether it is planet or whether it is something in this universe he creates it even our deeds and that is why you notice that Imam Abu Jafar in his statement he said وَقَدْ عَلِمَ and Allah has already always known that the number of those who will enter paradise and the number of those who will enter fire this knowledge is the most important part of Al-Qadr we said Al-Iman Al-Qadr is four things, but the most important one of them is what? Knowledge. And a Muslim, to be a Muslim, he or she must, he or she must believe that Allah Azza wa Jal knows everything. And he always known that. So there was no time before which there was a lack of knowledge. Allah Azza wa Jal had always known. This knowledge is first, and it is preceding happening of that which is decreed. So before the decreed happens, Allah Azza wa Jal knew all along. This is what we mean by that this knowledge is first. And that is why you see, you see that Imam Abu Ja'far said, فِي مَا لَمْ يزل. يعني has always, always, never preceded by lack of knowledge. He knows the people of paradise and he knows the people of, of hellfire. He knows their number. He said, uh, uh, all together, he, uh, so that uh, he knows the number of those who will enter paradise. He knows their number. He knows who they are individually. 
So this individual is from the people of paradise and this individual is from the people of hellfire. And that number does not get increased nor does it get decreased. So this means that Allah Azza wa Jal knows their deeds, right? It is a necessity of knowing who will be from the people of paradise and who it will be from the people of hellfire. It means that Allah Azza wa Jal knows who they are and what they do, their statuses, their deeds from their sayings to their uh, pract uh, practical deeds and actions. Allah Azza wa Jal knew all along that and wrote it in Allah al mahfuz and allowed that and allowed that to happen. And we've given a lot of all the details about each and every one of that. Like I said, we've already talked about this, but we're just going kind of like quickly over this just so that we can bring you up to speed or, you know, refresh your memory about what we talked before. So Allah Azza wa Jal knows the statuses of all those who are living creatures and mukallafin, as well as those who are not mukallafin, yani the non-living creatures. He knows every planet that will come into existence, when it will be created, and for how long it's going to be in, 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 in existence, and what's going to happen to it, and when it will perish and go away, right, and cease from existing, etc., etc. Everything in this universe is known to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, as is and also is from the knowledge of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Like I said, Imam Abu Jafar is talking about the knowledge which is the most important part of Al Qadr. That why he is so emphasizing about the knowledge and ilm. Waqad alima. Waqad alima Allah. So this is ilmullah. And ilmullah is from the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Like I said, this is it is mandatory upon every Muslim to believe in that. Why is Imam Abu Jafar is so emphasizing about that? Because a lot of people, and there are groups who existed and do exist now, who actually dispute and don't agree with this. Or say that Allah Azza wa Jal does not necessarily know everything. And that things could happen and then Allah Azza wa Jal learn about them as they happen or after they happen. As if things do come into existence haphazardly by accident or by coincidence. And only after they happen Allah Azza wa Jal learn about them. We say this is a terrible mistake. And the one who does not believe in the comprehensive knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal is not a Muslim to begin with. Believe it or not, they started to appear even at the time of Ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu wa ardah and radiallahu an Abi Umar ibn al-Khattab. Since then, as a matter of fact, I brought forward, I just wanted to share this with you. And this is actually in uh, uh, Sahih al-Imam Muslim. And there is a similar narration in uh, the Sunan al-Imam al-Tirmidhi, rahimahullahu ta'ala. Uh, that uh, narrator of this hadith, which is Yahya ibn Ya'mur, he narrated that the first man, and the, again, this is in Sahih al-Imam Muslim, look at how it started. Uh, uh, the first man who discussed al-Qadr in Basra was Ma'bad al-Juhani, a man known as Ma'bad al-Juhani. The narrator of this hadith, Yahya ibn Ya'mur, he said, I, along with Humayd ibn Abdul Rahman al-Himyari, set out for pilgrimage or for Umrah and said, so both of them came to pilgrimage or to perform Umrah. And they said, should it so happen that we come into contact with one of the companions of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we shall ask him about what is talked about taqdeer or al-qadr, divine decree. Accidentally, he's saying, accidentally, we came across Abdullah ibn Umar. Subhanallah. As they were going into the Masjid al-Haram in Mecca, they came across Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu anhu an abi. May Allah be pleased with him and his father. While he was entering the Masjid, my companion and I surrounded him, surrounded Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar. One of us stood on his right and the other stood on his left. I expected that my companion would authorize me to speak. This is the narrator of the hadith. He said, I, I, I expected that my companion would allow me to speak. So I went ahead and spoke. So he said, I therefore said, Abdul Abu Abdul Rahman, yani, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abu Abdul Rahman, there have appeared some people in our land who recite the Quran. Pursue knowledge 
And then after talking about their affairs added, they claim that there is no such thing as divine decree. There is no such thing as al qadr And events are not predestined. They just happen haphazardly. They just have happened by accident, by coincidence, without a prior, without being pre-decreed beforehand by Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal is manages all affairs, and everything that happens in this universe is according to how He managed and how He decreed it to happen. They're saying that's not the case. These people are saying that. Uh, uh, they claim that there is no such a thing as divine, divine decree and events are not predestined. Abdullah ibn Umar said, and look at what he said. It couldn't be clearer, it couldn't be more firm. He said, when you happen to meet such people, if you happen to meet such people who, de- who, de- who refute or who deny al-qadr, that Allah Azza wa Jal predestined everything, when you happen to, to meet such people, tell them that I have nothing to do with them and they have nothing to do with me. And verily, and verily, they are in no way responsible for my belief. Abdullah ibn Umar swore by him, by the Lord Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and said, if any one of them had with him gold equal to the bulk of the mountain of Uhud, if one of those who deny al-qadr if they had what is equal to the bulk of the mountain of Uhud gold and spent it in the way of Allah, has any one of you saw, have, has any one of you seen the mountain of Uhud? It is actually not just mountain, it is a series of mountains, huge, in Medina. He's saying if they have enough, uh, what is worth the bulk of mountain of Uhud, gold, and they spend it in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal, um, Allah would not accept it unless he affirmed his faith in divine decree. And then he further said, he narrated the famous hadith, which is narrated by his father, Abdul, Abdullah, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ibn Umar, uh, uh, Umar ibn Khattab, anh, which is the famous hadith of Jibreel, right? Mal iman, mal islam, mal iman, mal ihsan. And he recited that hadith, and he said that one of the mandatory pillars of an iman is to believe in the qadr. وَأَن تُؤْمِنَ بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى And even the scholars have said, you notice that in that narration, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered Jibreel, who came in the shape of a man, asking Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he answered about an iman, he said to believe and tu'mina billahi. وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ To believe in Allah and His Messen- and His angels. وَكُتُبِهِ And His books. وَرُسُولِهِ And His messengers. وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And the last day or the, or, or the hereafter or the last day, right? And then Rasulullah repeated as if to, sig- to signal the importance of that. وَأَن تُؤْمِنَ Notice in there, He gathered them all together. He said, أَن تُؤْمِنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ to believe in, his, in Allah and his, book, in his angels, in his books, in his messengers, in the last day. And then he repeated the verb, وَأَن تُؤْمِنَ or وَتُؤْمِنَ بِالْقَدَرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِهِ And to believe. And to believe in the qadr, both the good and the bad aspect of it. And we keep saying that the good and bad aspect of it is from that perspective of the human being. Otherwise, all of the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal is good. We just sometimes don't see it that way. We just sometimes don't see it that way because we fail to see the, uh, the wisdom behind it. So, denying the knowledge of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala of what people, of what happened in this universe is, makes the person, takes the person outside of the pale of Islam and it is the most important part of belief in the qadr of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Like I said, they appeared at the time of Ibn Umar and they appeared afterward and they actually keep on existing in the ummah today. Those who deny that Allah Azza wa Jal knows what we, what we will do and that we, he only knows the options 
We said that is not the case. Allah Azza wa Jal knows everything, knows what happened, knows what happens now, and knows what's going to happen until the hour, and knows what did not happen, even that which did not happen. Right? Even that which did not happen, Allah Azza wa Jal knows it. If it happened, how it would have happened. All of this is from the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal because we know that even that which did not happen is something that can be known. Right? Yani Allah Azza wa Jal knows that that person will choose this, not that. Sometimes you are faced with multiple options, with a decision to choose between two things or three things, right? And you're going to choose one of them. Allah Azza wa Jal knows what you're going to choose, knows what you're going to do, and that which you will not do, or that which you will not choose to do. And if it, he knows subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you happen to choose that, you did not. But if you happen to choose it, what would happen if you choose it? All of this is from the knowledge of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. We also talk about, and this is very important brothers and sisters, when you believe, you have to also, also uh, recognize and understand the fruits of that belief. The belief in Allah azza wa jal has fruits and has benefits to you. The belief in the angels has fruits. The belief in the books, the belief in the messengers, the belief in the last day, all of this has fruits and has benefits to the believer. As likewise, the belief in the qadr of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has also fruits to you. You may ask, what is it in it for me? Right? What do I gain from believing in the qadr of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala? One of the greatest benefits of that, one of the greatest fruits of believing in the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal is the tranquility and is the happiness and the safety and the security that the believer feels and enjoys when they truly understand the qadr and when they truly believe in the qadr. Why? Because they know and every believer, every Muslim or non-Muslim, every human being throughout their life they're going to be put through tests and trials. When something, when calamity befalls the believer, in contrast that to the non-believer, when calamity befalls the believer, they immediately know and remember that this is by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal knew it. He wrote it on me. It didn't happen haphazardly. It didn't happen by accident, right? Like flip a coin, just happened to hit me, not the other person. No, it was meant to befall you. And somebody else Something else was meant to befall him or her. Allah Azza wa Jal tests every person in a certain way and in a different way. So when that happens, you know immediately that Allah Azza wa Jal knew that's, that's going to happen. He knew that it's, it was going to happen to me. Yani in other words, he decreed it upon me. What does it mean he decreed it upon me? Yani he knew it's going to happen to me. He wrote it on me in the Lawh al Mahfuz. He willed it. He willed that this happen to me. He wished it that it happens to me, it befalls me. And he created it and brought it into existence. When you know that, you actually have tranquility. And you feel relieved. Why? Because you know that Allah Azza wa Jal, who made it befall you or uh, test you through that, also will help you if you, are, if you believe in that. And you are patient. And you are pleased with it. Pleased with the qadr of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And you know that this is the good for you. There is no question about it. No doubt that if it be, befell you, if it was decreed upon you, that it must be the good for you. Al khayr. All the good is in it for you. Even if you don't see it that way. But since Allah Azza wa Jal decreed upon you, it means that this is actually good for you. And uh, you are pleased with the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then Allah Azza wa Jal will help you and make a way, e an easy way out of it out of it for you. Allah Azza wa Jal does not just leave you like that, but decrees upon you certain things and then help you out of it. Make it, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ So the summary of this discussion is to, we, we must be conscious and we must know and believe that there is nothing that happens in this universe by coincidence or by accident. Everything is decreed. Whatever happens in this universe, to me, to you, somewhere else on earth, 
everything that happens that we witness, right, is by the will of Allah Azza wa by the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. He actually managed this and, and decreed it to happen, and He is the one who manages all affairs, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, from the greatest things that we should remember related to this is Ibad Allah, know that everything that Allah Azza wa Jal decreed is based upon His wisdom. A lot of people actually go wrong and make mistakes because they miss this important point. A lot of people, because they do not actually recognize that there is actually wisdom behind every decree. Every decree that we see. Even if you do not, for example, understand why this is happening. You must know and you must remember and you should remember that this is based on the wisdom of Allah Azza wa Jal. Every decree of Allah Azza wa Jal, every deed of Allah Azza wa Jal is based on wisdom. And this is also what makes the believer also tranquil and feel safe and secure that this is based on a wisdom whether I knew it or whether I didn't. Whether I could see the wisdom behind it or whether I don't. And like I said, a lot of people go astray. A lot of people start going into doubtful thinking. They start doubting Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Because they don't recognize and don't appreciate the wisdom, that there is a wisdom behind every degree. So they start asking out of doubt and out of objecting and out of objection to Allah Azza wa Jal that why this is happening to me. And we hear this all the time. A calamity befalls a person and they don't have the right understanding of Al-Qadr that we just described. They start saying, oh Allah, why this is happening to me? Why did you write this on me? No, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, know that this was for a great wisdom. Allah Azza wa Jal decreed it upon you for a great wisdom, regardless of whether you knew it or not. <coughs> Sometimes it doesn't even have to be related to you. It could be a decree of Allah Azza wa Jal that happens somewhere else or, on, or upon somebody else. How many times have we heard that? You know, this person, I've heard of this person, this and th- this and this happened to him. Wallahi, he doesn't deserve it. What do you mean by he doesn't deserve it? Allah Azza wa Jal, based upon his wisdom, he decreed upon that person. Or sometimes you feel or you see people questioning out of doubt or, and out of objection. Why, for example, hunger is striking these people in this country or in this part of the world? Or there is, for example, this avalanche who hit this particular area and a lot of people died. Or this fire broke out in this particular area and a lot of people were, dis- or a lot of houses were destructed or destroyed and a lot of people were lost. A lot of souls were lost. Or for example, this uh, <clears throat> earthquake or this tsunami, thousands of people. A bridge collapses, people die. Some people ask why this happens, right? We have to remember that Allah Azza wa Jal is, is all wise. Huwa al-Hakim subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of his attributes is al-Hikmah. Wisdom is one of the greatest attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Add on top of that, that Allah Azza wa Jal is just. Ya Akhwan, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah. We should always remember, and these are great principles, great foundation with respect to the belief in the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Sometimes something befalls you or befalls somebody else or somewhere else. And you're not able to understand the wisdom. Or sometimes you feel, why is this happening? Always remember. Always remember that two of the greatest foundations of Al-Qadr is that Allah Azza wa Jal. Adl subhanahu. Just. There is no way that Allah Azza wa Jal could be unjust. You see something befall certain people. Know that Allah Azza wa Jal is just. He does not oppress anybody. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا And Allah and your Lord does not oppress any person. Does not treat any person unjustly. That's first. Always remember that. It happened. It must be for a wisdom. And I know that Allah Azza wa Jal does not لَا يَظْلِمُ لَا يَظْلِمُ سُبْحَانَهُ عَادِلُ he is just subhanahu wa ta'ala with everybody, even the disbeliever. Even the disbeliever, Allah Azza wa Jal does not 
oppress them or take their right away. Every person, believer or non-believer, Allah Azza wa Jal is just. That's the first thing. Second, you know that Allah Azza wa Jal wise. He is wise as in, as in his deeds. And he is wise in his decrees. So if you ask why this is happening from the aspect of trying to learn the wisdom, no problem. Notice, two people could ask why this happened. One person is asking from the aspect that he is he or she is sincere in trying to see if they can learn the wisdom behind it. No problem. No problem. Right? Trying to, to seek the wisdom or to see what, why this happened. No problem. Another person asked from the aspect of objecting. Why is this happening to these people? Why did Allah Azza wa Jal hit them with that? This is objecting and doubting. And this is wrong. And this is what lead people into doubts. And wallahi, we've seen it where this eventually leads people outside of the pale of Islam because they start accusing Allah Azza wa Jal of being merciless with Iyadu Billah. Right? You probably heard of something like that. They eventually, these doubts start you know, going around in their heads until they, it takes them outside and they disbelieve in Allah Azza wa Jal. Because they say, how is Allah Azza wa Jal good? And how is Allah Azza wa Jal merciful, and all of these calamities happen, are happening around the world. Like I said, you should always remember that Allah Azza wa is just, and is wise, and is merciful, whether you know the wisdom or whether you don't. But there is a wisdom. عَلِمَهَا مَنْ عَلِمَهَا وَجَهِلَهَا مَنْ جَهِلَهَا That wisdom, some people may know it, and some others may not, may not know it. But even if you don't know it, I, I don't know what the wisdom behind this, right? Something happens. I say, I'm not able to tell what the wisdom behind it. But I know for a fact that Allah Azza wa Jal is just. And I know for a fact as well that Allah Azza wa Jal is wise. And it, there must be a wisdom behind it. I just don't know what it is. So this is actually something that we should always try to remember. And... The other aspect of it, and this is something that we've talked about before and we keep repeating because it is from what strengthens the believer. And it is from what keep, keeps the believer working and inching and trying their best to go closer to Allah Azza wa closer and closer. Some people may say, for example, if Allah Azza wa knows the people of paradise and the people of hellfire, why should I do? Why should I even try to do, Right? I am who I am written as. Right? Allah, here Imam Abu Jafar is saying that from our decree, from our aqidah, from our belief, is that Allah Azza wa Jal knows the number, He knows the number of those who will enter paradise and the number of those who will enter fire altogether. And that number does not decrease. So it is a very accurate number. Why should I even bother and do? We say, no, this is wrong. You are who you want to be. You are absolutely who you want to be. You want to be from the people of paradise. You are sincere in that. Allah Azza wa Jal will make it easy for you. And that will be what you are written as. Another person, Billah, he's not interested in being guided. He's not interested in pleasing his Lord and believing in Him. That's his choice or her choice. And so... The path of this belief will be made easy for that person, and he will be exactly what Allah Azza wa Jal wrote him. But he chose it. It is up to him or her. So we are who we want to be, and Allah Azza wa Jal will guide you if you are interested. He will not, never, never will Allah Azza wa Jal abandon or let down any person who is sincere in being guided. But will guide him and make it e and make the path of guidance easy for them, and that is why. So it is not our job to start pondering and going deeper and deeper into the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Why should I do when He knew? That's not my job. My job as a human being is to do, is to act, and do the good deeds as Allah Azza wa Jal has ordered me to do. And He showed us the path. He showed us the two paths. The path that pleases him subhanahu wa ta'ala and the path that displeases him subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So our job is to actually not go into futile discussions of what Allah Azza wa Jal knows and why should I do, but rather mind my own business. And guess what? My own business is doing. My own business and your business is to do and act according to what Allah Azza wa Jal ordered us to do. And keep doing that until you meet Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And to avoid all the prohibitions of Allah Azza wa Jal and to keep doing that. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith which is related by Imam Al Bukhari and Imam Muslim, I'malu, do, act. He is guiding the Ummah. This is a great guidance from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, do, I'malu, fakullun muyassarun lima khuliqala. And every person, it will be made easy. It will be made easy for every person to do that which he, sh- he chooses to do. You choose guidance, Allah Azza wa Jal will, makes it, will make it easy for you to be guided. You choose misguidance, Allah Azza wa Jal will let you, it will abandon that person and will let them down, and so they will, it will be, the, mis- the path of misguidance will be made easy for that person, and so they will be, mis- they will be misguided. But the causes of guidance or misguidance are from the person himself. Sabah is from the from the servant himself or herself. Like Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna sa'yakum shatta. Your actions are diverse and they are into two, either guidance or misguidance. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى As for the one who gives and fears Allah Azza wa Jal. Notice, who is that? These, at, these verbs are attributed to who? فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى who is the one who is yu'ti fi sabilillah? The person Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us, is mentioning these verbs with attributed to the person, not to Allah Azza wa Jal. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَالتَّقَى That's the first path. سَعْيَكُمْ السَّعْي What we do is diverse. Shatta. There is the side of those who believe in Allah Azza wa Jal and fear Him and those who do not. He gives us the example. The first ones are فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى has taqwa to Allah Azza wa Jal. Who, who? The person. On the other hand, وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى The one who becomes stingy doesn't give the, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَاسْتَغْنَى And he, he feels or she feels like self-sufficient from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Again, that's the person. So the person is الْأَسْبَاب الْهِدَايَة Guidance or misguidance is from the person himself or herself. They get to choose uh, what they want to be or who they want to be. Type. So what we are supposed to do is to do the good deeds, al-amal al-salih, and to leave the evil deeds, right? This is what we are supposed to do and this is our job. Taking al-qadr as an excuse for uh, sinning, we said is not valid is an invalid excuse. And we've also explained why that is the case. Some people, for example, they say, we sin and we are who we are, sinful people or uh, on the wrong path, just because this is what Allah Azza wa Jal wrote me. And we say, this is not an excuse. This is not a valid excuse. You don't know what Allah Azza wa Jal wrote you as. And this is not of your business. It is hidden from you for a great wisdom so that you keep trying. You don't know what Allah Azza wa Jal wrote you. Your business is to actually keep repenting to Allah Azza wa Jal and keep inching closer to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And this will, like I said, this will not be an excuse, a valid excuse in front of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. He showed us the two paths. And he showed us the path of good and the path of evil. And people will have no excuse in the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we said a lot of people get into trouble. And they actually go, go get into misguidance because they take the excuse of what? Of Al-Qadr. They take the excuse or they accuse the Qadr for who they are or for who they choose to be. And we say that's not actually a, uh, a valid excuse, but rather it is the deeds of that person. Uh, they say, if Allah Azza wa Jal wrote me as from the people of paradise, then I will be from the people of uh, paradise and I will enter. And if Allah Azza wa Jal wrote me from the people of hellfire, والعياذ بالله, then I will be among them and I will enter, I will enter them. We say, like I said, we say this is wrong. It is all in your hands. Wallahi, it is all in your hands. 
you choose, you pick and choose who you want to be. And, and what is your eternal abode in? Is paradise or hellfire? It is up to you. Um, and, and it is based on the deeds. It's not a gamble. Yani when, see, see, this is something that we should understand and we should actually contemplate and ponder. When we say Allah Azza wa Jal knows the people of paradise and knows the people of hellfire. Or in other narrations, remember we saw this, that Allah Azza wa Jal said that He created people for paradise and He created people for hellfire. Do you think this is like a gamble, like, uh, you know, flip a coin, so this person is from the people of paradise and this, people, this person is from the people of hellfire? Is it that the case? Absolutely not. When Allah Azza wa Jal says that these are from the people of paradise, or I created these people for, the, for paradise, to enter paradise, what does it mean? It means that He knew what they're going to do. And they will do... And it will be made easy for them to do the deeds of the people of paradise. So they will enter it and they will be among it, among its people. And this is how they are written. It's not based on gamble or based on, you know, on or flipping a coin. It is solely based on the deeds. And the deeds are al-asbab. It is based on those asbab that you enter paradise. The good deeds are causes for the person to enter paradise. And the evil deeds or the disbelief is a cause for the person to enter paradise. Into hellfire, walayyadu billah. It is based on that. It's not some kind of, a, you know, a, like a hidden formula or whatever. It is not. It is not the case. And we've actually uh, 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 refuted that excuse. And like we said, it is yeah, unacceptable or invalid in front of Allah Tabaraka wa Taala. And if you remember last time, I, actually we gave the example of those people when it comes to a rizq. So those people who say I am, they don't do. They're not interested in guiding and guidance and get it and doing better because they say, uh, you know, it is based on the qadr. I am who I am, right? Who I am written as. But we see these, these very same people when it comes to earning the money. They go out and they do an asbab and they do the causes. They don't stay at home, behind at home. And they say, well, my rizq is also part of the qadr, like my deeds. You, you see that? Like my deeds, so they're saying, I'm sinning because this is how I'm written. But the rizq is also part of your qadr. Allah Azza wa Jal made taqdeer for you how much you're going to earn and what you're going to get. So why go out and work then? But you don't do that. You actually still go out and you try your best to work and compete in the marketplace, in the workplace, to earn the money, right? You don't rely on al-qadr. So how come then when it comes to your deeds and guidance, you rely on al-qadr? This is double standard. You cannot have it both ways. Either or. And we know that you have to go out. Although it is from, your rizq is from your qadr, but you still you have to, we, we have been taught that you need to, to take an asbab, right? You have to actually do the causes to earn the money and go out and do and work hard to get that money. And we said that even, subhanAllah, even the animals, even the birds, even the, yani, the animals who do not have uh, intellect like the human being, they know that they have to go out and seek their rizq. They don't stay in their home and, and hope for the uh, sky to actually uh, rain food, does it? They go out. And how about the human being who is, Allah Azza wa Jalla bless them with intellect and mind so that they can think. So we say that this is an inaccept, in a, or, or invalid excuse. Uh, in the next statement, the Imam Abu Jafar, quickly in those few minutes that are left, uh, the Imam Abu Jafar says in the statement number 87, he said, وَكَذَلِكَ أَفْعَالُهُمْ فِيمَا عَلِمَ مِنْهُمْ أَنْ يَفْعَلُونَ And the same applies to their deeds. He knew whatever they would do. Uh, and this is ob- obviously uh, also, this is something that we've already talked about. If you think about it, this is actually a necessity of Allah Azza wa Jal knowing the people of paradise and the people of hellfire. Remember in the very previous statement that we just talked about. Imam Abu Jafar, he said, Allah Azza wa Jal has always known the people of paradise and the people of hellfire. And he knew their number and that number does not increase or decrease, right? Type. Don't you think that it is from the necessity of that knowledge that Allah Azza wa Jal also knows their deeds? Because like we said, the fact that that person is from the people of paradise, it is based on their deeds. So the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal knows the people of paradise, it, is also, it also necessitates 
that he knows their deeds, that their good deeds that make them deserve going into paradise by the by the favor of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Likewise, on the other hand, he Allah Azza wa Jal knows the deeds of the people of Hellfire and what they do and the evil deeds that they do, right? Also, this is from the necessity of knowing that these people are are from are the from the people of Hellfire wa Iyadu Billah. So this is a necessity, and we likewise we see we say that this also Allah Azza wa Jal knew all along. So like he knew who would be in paradise and in hellfire, he knew also their, the details of their deeds, of their statuses, of their sayings, of their actions, and of their deeds, and of their beliefs. Everything is known to Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. And like we said before, this is from the aspect that whether you enter paradise or hellfire, it is again not a flipping a coin, but rather it is based on your deeds. You do good deeds, and Allah Azza wa Jal will admit you into paradise. You do evil deeds and Allah Azza wa Jal will punish you into hellfire. And disbelief or shirk wal iyadu billah will make the person permanent and uh, they will abode eternally in hellfire. So it is based on the on the deeds of the of the of the person. So that is why also yani when he said and the same applies. What is the same applies? The knowledge. Notice in the previous statement he said and Allah has always known the number of those. So, and the same applies, yani Allah has always known, likewise, their deeds. So he knows what they're going to do, and he knew whatever they would do um, from their deeds. And the last thing, real quick, I want to start with this statement, uh, and we'll stop in a minute or so. Uh, he said in this 88th statement, وَكُلٌّ مُيَسَّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ, لما خلق له. وَكُلٌّ And everyone will have what he was created for, made easy for him. And this is based on the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which like I said is in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, where he alayhi salatu wa sallam said, I'malu do, fakullun muyassarun lima khuliqa lah. Everybody, it will be made easy for everyone to do that which uh, he chose to do. Uh, and this is based also on um, or similar to what Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Layl, إِنَّ سَعْيَكُمْ لَشَدَّ فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْقَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَ فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ Notice, مُيَسَّرْ فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى On the other hand, وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَ فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ مُيَسَّرْ فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْعُسْرَى So the people of guidance will be made, it will be made easy for them, yusr. And those who of misguidance, it will be made easy for them. Al-usr, or unease and misguidance. wal billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who choose guidance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are guided. And those who will be admitted into paradise. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conclude our life with the good deeds. Allahumma khtum lana bis salihati a'malana. Hadha wallahu a'lam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وإياك